Okay, I'm going to start taping this uh, radio off because this area in here, all the way down, the base along the bottom, along the front to bottom, and along this side, as well as this area all up on the edge in here, and next on the exterior part here, same as there. I'm going to tape those off because I have a brown spray paint to paint that to make it back like the original was. So I'll get started on that. Okay, I've got the uh, brown spray paint and I've got this taped off. So hopefully it won't get any overspray on any of the nice wood cabinet. So we'll give it a spray and see what it starts to look like. Looks like it's going on pretty good. Okay, let's start to pull this off and see how it looks. Yeah, this was the way that it was uh, originally manufactured with actually I think these were painted brown too, but I decided not to paint those brown. And the inside of this, on both sides, was painted brown. And I've also decided not to do that one. Because I like the looks of that wood. I think the brown would be a nice accent, but I don't want too much of it. Well, that's a little line here. Might have to go over that one a little, little bit. Boy, it sure is taking my finish off there a little bit. I'll have to go over that again. That's tape. Wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah, that's a bummer. It probably will do it down here on these sides too. Yep, it's leaving a bit of a mark there. But I think a little bit of that finish will clean that right up. It cleaned up a lot worse than that when I first started, so it'll definitely clean that up. I'm thinking it looks pretty good. Yes, I do believe so. I'm liking the looks of it. It's not too much brown, but it's enough to give it a little pop, a little accent. So yeah, what do you think? I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so I decided I am going to paint these two, or the four, bars and the sides. So I'm taping that off because I think the paint really looks good on here. It really gives it a pop, and I think 
Originally these were painted and the sides were painted, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. Okay, so we're, I've got it taped off and I think we're about ready to, uh, about ready to spray. It is so windy outside, so I've decided to uh, paint in the barn. I'll put the doors open a little bit. Yeah, I think this is gonna look pretty good once I get the right amount of paint on here. Should have a real nice look. There now, I think we'll just let that set for a little while, let it dry out. For a little bit and then I'll pull the tape off. And of course, it'll probably ruin my finish again. I got the overhead doors open to air it out in here a little bit. This paint, yeah, see it's leaving marks. I'm gonna have to go over this again with a little of that restore finish. Doesn't take much. Yeah, it definitely leaves white marks. It's not the glue, it actually pulls a little of the finish off. I can see it on the tape. There, now it looks pretty good. I think that makes it pop a little more with this inside done and the four posts. Now I just need to wait till I get my new material for the speaker cover. And uh, then I'll clean up these, this finish here where you can see it's ripped off a little bit, but I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, this uh, Farnsworth radio has an RCA jack input on the back here that comes off and goes over to here to this switch. This switch, allows for TV input. So in other words, a phonograph or a TV can be plugged in here and it would use it, the tubes here for an amplifier. So what I wanna do is plug, uh, put this little uh, quarter inch jack in the back here, mount it in the back so that I can plug this into it. And I'm gonna connect it to the same wires here. Actually, I'm gonna connect it through two 1K ohm resistors which are gonna go on these two endpoints here, which is your left and right ear jack or left and right stereo. And this is your ground, which is gonna be the chassis ground. So I'm gonna end up putting a hole in here, putting that in there. These two 1K resistors are gonna take it from stereo to mono. You don't wanna directly short these two together. It could cause a problem to your uh, Bluetooth device and I have a Bluetooth device that is this here, it's charging. And this is gonna plug into here. It has a volume control here, and this is the on off button and the play button. So what I can do is stream music directly into the radio here through this TV input from my phone so I can play 50s music or whatever because there's not a lot of signals on AM around here, certainly not a lot that you wanna to listen to all the time. Okay, I've got this, uh, got the jack inserted. I've got the two 1K ohm resistors soldered to there and the other end going to ground. So, Johnny, be good. A similar song on Amazon Music. <laughs> So I got the case done, got the new material speaker cover grill material put in. 
I have the radio chassis here that I finally figured out how this dial cord goes to where it would turn in the correct direction. That took a while. There was no documentation that showed me how that dial cord went back on. So I drew it. I drew it on my schematic here. So, and I'll keep that with the radio in case uh, I have to deal with it again in the future. So now I'm about ready to put this chassis back in to the case. Uh, but I need to put the dial face on there first and uh, clean up the push button knobs. So I'll start on that. So the next thing is to install this antenna. Here's the antenna cabling coming down and the single that's going to go through this antenna right here. So the single is going to go into there and the other multi-prong plug is going to go into there. So we'll get this antenna put in and uh, then the speaker cable is going to go up through this hole. And mount right into here. Okay, so we'll get the antenna put in and uh, fire it up and see if we can line up the dial tuner indicator to the correct channel. Okay, I've got the antenna put in, the cable's hooked up, and I think we're ready to give it a try. I plugged it in, so let's turn it on for the first time after I rebuilt it and see what it sounds like. The lights are on, that's a good sign. Oh, that's... And try to make a call, try to use the internet, oh, yeah. their phone, and that will give you a really good idea. Because the problem with all of the... Oh, a lot more channels than I was thinking it was going to have. That's good. Tom, so coveragemap.com will give you an idea. And what I need to do sourced from people. So they what I need to do is find out when I get on channel 850 and I can connect the cable, the uh, dial cord up to this, because right now it's just floating on here. I need to connect the dial cord up once I realize what channel we're on. So you can put in your address and you can see kind of like them. And that will give you... 850 is like one of the strongest the channels, so it's possible channel that's it. And so you can check that out. Uh, there is one, this one's a little complicated, uh, and I've not used it before, but I... There, I think I'm done. Together we'll explore safer ways to minimize your risk. I'll provide you with a tailored retirement release kit and a copy of my book, Stress and Rocking Chairs, to discuss strategies best suited for you as you approach or are in your retirement. Republican members of Congress are pushing and pressing the weight. I would be lifting them up to the Lord as I was, you know, Watergate and all the other abuses. Um, I almost went to the scrap heap because of it, but instead, um, a, a very able group of folks led by this on this program. But you know, here we are. We're discussing it, and. Um